you've never heard of medullary sponge kidney, this is an incredibly nasty disorder that causes your kidneys to end up looking like Swiss cheese. To make matters worse, those suffering from this condition also form kidney stones at an incredibly high rate. Fortunately, there are a few things that you can do to slow down your stone formation if you're one of the unfortunate few suffering from this condition. Hi, I'm Joey Weichman. Welcome to Stone Relief. Back when I first started educating on kidney stones, one of the communities that I got really involved with was the Medullary Sponge Kidney Group on Facebook. If you're unfamiliar with this condition, it's a particularly nasty one, as you'll find out in this video. And the people who suffer from this disorder get kidney stones at an exceptionally high rate. So, in this video, we'll review what we need to know about this condition, its link to kidney stones, and what you can do to help better manage this condition if you're one of those unfortunate few. But first, let's learn a little bit about this disorder before diving in any deeper. So, medullary sponge kidney, also known as MSK. This is a pretty rare disorder and it is congenital in nature, meaning it is something that you're going to incur from birth. It's not necessarily hereditary. And it impacts about eh, roughly about 1 in 5,000 people in the population at this time. Now, unfortunately, the causes of this uh, are pretty they're relatively unknown. The doctors don't really, really know what is at the root of this, but there are some associated um, conditions that will potentially link to this. And the biggest thing here, and probably why you're watching this video, is that about 70% of the people who have MSK form kidney stones. And this is why it's such a big group on Facebook and why I got so involved with it. Now, what happens with this particular condition, as I had mentioned, it's a little bit like Swiss cheese. Um, there are cysts that are forming in medulla of the kidney. And this is the, the interior of the kidney and kind of like where they have the, the renal pyramidal strikes. And if you were looking at this through a medical imaging, you would see porosity and little holes. And uh, if you were like an ultrasound, it'd be very dark spots that would show that there was something occurring there that wasn't necessarily a part of the normal kidney structure. And these cysts can range in size. They can be small, you know, millimeter sized, all the way up to eight millimeters or more. To, those are relatively sizable. The, you know, about the size of a dime is typically about as big as they'll go. And again, this causes the kidney to look like Swiss cheese or a sponge, if you will, on different medical imaging devices or if you were to remove it from someone's body and cut it open. Now, symptoms are not super clear. It's not like you have this one thing and you know you have MSK. Generally, it's gonna be caught through some sort of medical imaging that either may be related to your kidney or maybe it just got caught uh, when looking at something unrelated to your kidney, but the, the surface level symptoms are not that prevalent. So they're gonna be things like blood in the urine, also known as a hematuria. Uh, recurrent kidney stones is usually kind of a thing that kicks off that there might be something at the root. And then there's also things like recurrent UTIs. But again, these issues on their own aren't necessarily indicative of that 100% you have MSK. Again, it's likely gonna come out looking at something else or maybe looking at a kidney stone issue. This is how typically most people become aware of the situation. And as we're gonna talk about in the next chapter a little bit more, the biggest thing that this has an impact on is restriction and urine flow. And we're gonna check out why that's an issue for kidney stone sufferers more in the next chapter. Okay, so now that we know what MSK or medullary sponge kidney actually is, what are the actual mechanisms at play here that go into this 70% of people who have this condition form kidney stones? Well, there's really two particular mechanisms that are at work here. The first of which is with re relation to urine flow. We mentioned this at the end of the last chapter about the restriction of urine flow. Those cysts that form throughout the kidney, uh, they really kind of hinder uh, the flow of urine, uh, which is why the people who have that condition are generally have very high levels of pain on a consistent basis because the obstructions that are generated by these cysts generate kidney stone level pain. And the reason for obstructions of urine flow leading to kidney stone formation is really this. So medullary sponge kidney, decrease in urine flow, and any time that you have a decrease in urine flow, you have an increase in the time and also concentration of stone form forming elements such as calcium and phosphate in this case that can bind together to be able to stone for I'm sorry to form stone. So anytime that we're increasing the time or the concentration of these things is a bad thing. The other side of this coin is there's also this condition medullary sponge kidney MSK can lead to something called distal renal 
tubular acidosis or DRTA. And we're going to have a separate video that goes into more deep detail about this. But on the surface, really, DRTA has to deal with your body's ability to manage I guess uh, the best way I can put it is acidity. Really, that's really at the core of what it's after. It's managing a pH balance. So when you have distal renal tubular acidosis, you have an impact in the ability for your body to be able to secrete hydrogen ions, which are acidifying, in contrast to something that is alkalizing, like a bicarbonate type of ion. So when you have a decrease in the amount of hydrogen ions that are be able to be excreted, you have alkaline urine that as a result of it, because again, without the presence of a acidifying agent in the body, urine is going to go alkaline. You have low urinary citrate because most of the citrate in your body is being taken elsewhere outside of the kidneys to be able to try to help buffer some of this acidity that's occurring in the body to bring it back down into a neutral state. And as we know, citrate plays a protective role when it comes to kidney stones because it binds with things like calcium to be able to prevent free calcium from binding with phosphate or with other stone types like oxalate. And then lastly, there's an increased urinary calcium. So when your body's acidity is out of control, a um, couple things happen. So not only is more calcium absorbed from the foods that you're eating, but an acidic body is also going to be stripping calcium from your bones and providing more of that that is going to be present in your kidney. And anytime again, as like we talked about with the situation above with more decreased urine flow, there's going to be more stone forming elements found in your kidney, which eventually will lead to an increase in stone formation. So what, if anything, can you do about it? Let's dig into that in the next chapter. Just a reminder, this information is available in written form on our website. Find the link below in the description. So if you find yourself being one of the unfortunate one in 5,000 that suffer from MSK, there are a few things that you can do to try to help make your life with this condition a little bit more tolerable. So the first thing that we found, at least it's been my experience with the MSK community, is managing your hydration. And this may sound too simple to be true, um, but it really has a very, very powerful impact on a couple different things. So I suggest a minimum of three liters per day because this is going to create, according to the American Urological Association, adequate amount of urine to be able to flush out your kidneys on a regular enough basis to be able to keep stone forming elements from having that time and also quantity to be able to bind together to form kidney stones. The other piece of this puzzle as well for people who are suffering from MSK, as I had mentioned previously, they have very high levels of kidney stone type pain on a consistent basis. If you're able to manage your hydration, you're able to manage the obstructions better than you would if you're a roller coaster hydrating. And what I mean by this is a nice consistent eight to 10 ounces per hour of water consumed for a total of three liters per day versus drinking a liter and then nothing for hours and then drinking a liter. When you roller coaster hydrate, you force a lot of water and then eventually urine as a byproduct of filtering out waste from your body into the kidneys, which causes them to stretch unnaturally, causing your pain. The next piece of this is diet. And this really comes with neutralizing urine pH because in order for calcium phosphate kidney stones to form, which are associated with MSK, you need to have alkaline urine. So when you eat in a pattern such as a carnivore or animal-based diet, you have the ability to neutralize your urine pH because eating of plants has an alkalizing effect on your urine. And then lastly, pain. This is kind of a combination of things that we've already mentioned here, but if you're able to manage your hydration and stop the roller coaster hydration and just nice, even consistent eight to 10 ounces through every hour that you're awake, you're able to manage pain. And then the other piece of this puzzle is the product that I created to help me pass all of my kidney stones was cleanse. Now there are pain relieving ingredients in this product that will help, I would say probably most people. As with most herbal supplements, it's not a 100% slam dunk in all cases, but for most individuals, if they take a low dose of this product on a regular basis, they're gonna be able to manage their kidney stone pain, but they're also gonna be able to help potentially destroy some of the kidney stones that are currently hanging out in their kidney, causing issues in addition to their medullary sponge kidney. If you're looking to say a big you to your kidney stones, join our free community at kidneystones.com.